I'm John Mancini. I'm a professor of medicine and cardiology here at UBC, and I'm director of the Cardiovascular Imaging Research Core Laboratory. We've been working on uh, various different ways of getting a picture of the uh, arteries of the heart or uh, the neck, uh, other parts of the body that might give us clues as to whether uh, risk factors are at play that are leading to uh, early evidence of hardening of the arteries. And we believe that this is an important addition to our uh, uh, more usual, traditional ways of finding people who are at risk for having heart attacks in the future or strokes, other kinds of vascular problems. We've been uh, involved in this for about 30 years and uh, so a lot of the work is in the context of uh, clinical trials looking at the effects of uh, drugs or devices, for example. Uh, but many of the techniques that we're using are also used in clinical practice. And so we uh, provide some support for the uh, prevention programs uh, in town, Healthy Heart Program, uh, et cetera. Existing diagnostic tools for assessing risk are really fairly rudimentary at this point in time. It really boils down to some key elements of the patient's history, uh, particularly the family history, blood pressure measurements, simple blood tests like cholesterol. And we know we can get fairly far with those simple things, but we also know that we're not uh, picking up all patients who might be at risk or might already have evidence of early hardening of the arteries. So as our therapies get better and safe, uh, we see an opportunity to prevent atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries at earlier and earlier stages at a time when we think the interventions might have bigger and bigger impact uh, over the long term. So in that respect, we feel very strongly that our imaging methods and approaches are very complementary and additive to what's going on in routine practice today. So the health economic implications are really important to consider because obviously we're talking about uh, sophisticated testing and uh, equipment. Uh, so all of these are obviously going to be more expensive than merely sitting down and talking to a patient, measuring a blood pressure and doing a simple uh, blood test like cholesterol. So immediately off the bat, there is a cost disincentive. However, the goal here is to really target treatment to those who need it the most so that the benefits are accrued most efficiently and to maybe back off from treatment of those who might not need uh, therapy based on more knowledge of what's going on in the arteries. So I think it really does uh, fall in the realm of personalized medicine. I think that uh, when we talk about that, we think solely about genes and uh, various uh, sophisticated things, but knowing your own personal trajectory for atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries based on a personal image of your arteries or your heart, I think is uh, going to complement that sort of more molecular view of uh, personalized uh, medicine. And it may be that uh, uh, some of these uh, images will help dictate which therapies are better or, 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 or not in a given uh, person. So yeah, I do view this as being part of personalized uh, medicine for sure. I think personalized medicine has many facets and uh, all of them are really important to explore in a very careful and methodical way. On the other hand, we do know that there are uh, massive 
uh, interventions that uh, do a great amount of good in everybody. So for example, weight loss and exercise and a good diet. Uh, you don't need to know your genome or any sophisticated tests to know that those things are good medicine for everybody. And so fine-tuning it beyond uh, whether it's uh, biomarkers, um, uh, imaging tests as we've been discussing, or genomic uh, SNPs, etc. I think those are all very exciting and very important areas uh, for research.